So on July 24th of this year, AT&T and DirecTV officially merged together. Uh, went through the FCC, went through the government. Right, the, government. Uh, the deal is worth $48.5 billion. Billion dollars is a lot of money. Um, which makes AT&T the largest pay TV company in the United States of America. Bigger than Xfinity, Comcast, Time Warner, Dish, all of those together. Uh, and now the, the AT&T DirecTV, the firm have a, has a combined 26 million subscribers. And that is only households. So that does not account for the fact that many households have more than one person in, obviously. So this is 26 million household subscribers. Communications Commission is the primary regulator in this in this merger, um, and the FCC actually placed restrictions on AT&T over the next four years. One of the restrictions is that AT&T must provide fair access to content for everyone. Okay, now that means that if you live in Barrow, Alaska, okay, you must be able to receive the same content that someone here in Houston receives. Think about that one for a second. Okay. AT&T must also debundle their services. You know how you get the TV, internet, and phone all at the same time? Uh, AT&T actually does this right now, um, but the SEC is mandating that they continue to do it over the next four years. And the reason why is that um, the SEC wants lower income uh, households to actually be able to purchase one of the services. Okay. AT&T must now also disclose all agreements Everything that AT&T AT does over the next four years must be above the table, open, and available for everyone to see. Okay? They also have to hire compliance officers. Now, not just in-house compliance officers, but AT&T must also hire an outside firm to ensure that they are complying with the FCC's regulations. Um, network performance must be reported. This came about because of the uh, Comcast and Netflix uh, issue that happened last year. Uh, Netflix actually complained that Comcast was lowering their, their bandwidth 
um, because the networks want to pay more money. Uh, so now AT&T must record and report all performance, whether it goes up or down, and actually why it went up or down. Uh, this is the best part. AT&T must bring fiber optic services to 12.5 million new customers. Okay? Now, these customers are rural households and schools that cannot afford to provide the service for themselves. Okay? And now, these conditions um, are uh, designed to ensure stakeholder benefit. And we're all business uh, students. We know stakeholders means just about everyone. But in this particular instance, customer is the greatest importance. Right? Now, the FCC is the controlling authority. And in order to understand what their, what their motives are, we took a look at them. And we noticed that uh, the FCC does not address consolidation problems, uh, particularly in the video marketplace. Now, this comes about because, again, of the Comcast and Netflix issue. Netflix is a video streaming service. Um, and that's, the FCC didn't directly um, address this issue. But the FCC is focused on keeping the internet open and available to everyone. Right? So indirectly, yes, they are. Um, dealing with the uh, video issue, but not in a direct manner, like we would think. Um, the regulations, obviously, are designed to benefit the consumers, and they are the foremost um, concern of the, FCC, of the FCC. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Pedro, and he's going to talk to us about the supporters of this merger. Okay. <clears throat> now, the supporters, they they're blaming them with this deal, you let, you're going to get better video, better internet. And they also claim that the current service that you have right now with the Red TV or at and it will continue on until the final of your contract. Not only that, but the Red TV shareholder will be gaming shares from at and For every share that you have of the Red TV, you're going to be gaining 1.892 shares of at and So if you've got 100 shares of DirecTV, you're going to get 189.2 shares of um, at and You also get money back, $28.50 for every share of the DirecTV you own, which, again, if you've got 100 shares, you get $2,850 in your pocket. <clears throat> the support has to play the use ATT can ut utilize their largest revenue revenue stream like business solution, entertainment and internet, consumer mobility and international mobility. <clears throat> consumer mobility and international mobility are the most important. Why? Because they apply to us the customer, the regular Joe customer, where we can travel abroad, we can travel any, anywhere in the nation, and we should have a better signal, better service. In August 10, after the deal, they come out with a new service, uh, a new deal. Four receivers, four, uh, four lines, unlimited talk, 10 gigabytes of wireless data, for two hundred dollars a month, I don't know. It sounds like a reasonable deal. And now for conclusion, Kiara. Okay, so the FCC is setting a major precedent for future major cap mergers by even allowing this union to happen. Past huge mergers like this have produced poor customer satisfaction and poor customer service, and many are weary of this merger because they think it might turn into a monopoly and hurt customers in the future. While customer savings remain to be seen, it's been explicit, explicitly stated that services like NFL Sunday Ticket and things like that, that won't change. But no mention about prices remaining the same has been made. So the definite future of this merger it remains debatable, but we do know that thanks to this union, over 12 million rural customers and schools will receive better service, and customers and stakeholders will benefit from this merger thanks to the FCC regulations. 
Now, as a group, we do agree that the regulations are a good idea. We just recommend that it be longer than four years because we don't think that's a sufficient amount of time for to ensure that AT&T and DirecTV won't take advantage of the shrinking competition and turn into a monopoly. Why is four years not sufficient? Because it's not even long enough to provide the fiber optic, fiber optic services to the 12 million customers. So we just presented to you the situation, which is AT&T and DirecTV merging. We went over the skeptics, those who are against the merger due to monopolistic concerns. We went over the details of the regulations and the supporters of the merger. And then we concluded with our thoughts and recommendations. Are there any questions for us? Thanks. Um, 1029.